Hello, lovelies. Okay, so now is the time to dive into those things that are blocking us from our comfort. So we're gonna dive deep, get into there, figure out what stops us from feeling comfort, do some releasing, and then you get a delicious, juicy meditation that helps to invite in all of that positive emotion. And the next part's going to be about using the items from your kit and actually putting them on you. We're going to be doing a live crystal grid with your whole body and pulling into that energy during the meditation. So it's going to be fantastic. I'm excited you're joining me. So we're going to start out by talking a little bit about what blocks us from our comfort. So comfort comes very easy if we allow it to. And one of the reasons we don't is because our mind is doing all this, <laughs> the mind chatter, right? And so the mind chatter kicks in and it robs us of our comfort because typically when we're feeling depression and lonely and isolated, we're tuning into that of the past. And when we're feeling anxiety and stressed out, we're tuning into what we imagine will happen in the future. Worry is such a waste of imagination. And so if we are in the present feeling something that's not giving us comfort, we'll be able to tune into the meditation, go within, find that comfort. But first we need to address tuning into the past and tuning into the future instead of staying present, staying focused and allowing ourselves to feel comfort. And a lot of times people think that by feeling comfort, we actually will slow ourselves down. Uh, there's a difference between feeling comfort and calm and sleeping and lazy. And sometimes we get stuck in this motion of, I have to keep going and I have to keep doing it. If I allow myself to feel comfort, then I'll stop progressing. I'll stop bettering my life. I'll stop all my self-help. <laughs> I'll stop improving and I'll become like these other people that I've watched turn into stagnancy and lose their desire, lose their passion, lose their focus. That is the opposite of comfort and calm. That's avoidance. That's shutdown. That's losing all of the reasons why you're probably stressing out. And so we want to get to a place where we can allow ourselves to feel that peace, feel that sensation of calm and centeredness without having all of the drama thrown in the way. And uh, one of the things that I do that helped me to get my mind clear, to get focused, to be able to understand that I am on a path and a journey and I don't have to do everything right now and I don't have to have everything right now, but I do get to have the delicious things that I love right now in peace. I create what I call a bug list. Um, don't worry, we will have a positive list in a minute. So if you've ever noticed those times when you're going through your day and it's like, oh, I hate that when that happens. Oh, I can't stand when they do that. Oh, I can't stand this. I can't stand that. And we have all these noises of like, oh, note to self. I hate this thing and something needs to be done and I need to change something so that I don't have to hate this thing. How many times in your mind do you think about it? Like, oh, I really need to change that. 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 It's probably a lot. So instead, I invite you to even put like a piece of paper on your fridge or to have a journal that you leave like marked, like dog near the corner, or put a little post note on it so that you know you can come back to it like that. Um, even if you have grab your phone out and you have like a note in your phone that you just add to the list. By giving the energy somewhere to go other than in our minds, it offers clarity. And that's our goal with this kit is to have that clarity, that open space so that the comfort can come in and to create that connection between the heart, the throat and the mind, which we're gonna get into all that. So grab out a paper or a note and start making your bug list. What is it that's bugging you? Um, for example, in my house, I have this drawer. It bugs me. It doesn't quite close easy, and if it gets yanked too fast or too slow, the whole thing goes and it breaks. And so then I have to like crawl in this space of hall, and I have to like redo the pieces. And and so if it works and it functions, but it bugs the crap out of me because I still have to go and refix it over and over again. So finally, I had enough, and you know what I did? I put it on the bug list. Fix the drawer. And so I go to fix the drawer and I can't find the part. So I'm like, oh, actually, first thing on the bug list is to find the part to fix the drawer. Even if it takes me six months to find the part, by putting it on the list, I don't have to think about like, oh, I got to do that. I got to do that. Oh, I know I have to do that. It's on the list and I'll get to it at some point. And that's the other key is you have to actually cross things off your list. So take some time and tune into what's bugging you most. See what's around you that you're is taking up that noise. Is it a person? Is it something that somebody's doing and you need to have a conversation but you haven't made time for that conversation? Great. 
put it on the bug list and you'll make time or it'll sit there forever and never be changed and the relationship will burn out and you can take it off because the relationship's gone. <laughs> Although that's not the avenue that we would like the best, unless it's for our best interest, right? So I always ask with grace and ease, please, can we please move through these things? And so with your bug list, you can set aside time each day to just do one item on your bug list. Now, at first, it's going to feel like the bugged things are overwhelming. Like there's so many and I can list things that are bugging me forever. It's true. You probably can. The key to this is to put it all somewhere. So if you could have a place and a home where the bug list goes, where it sits, where it stays, then it makes it easier if you limit yourself to only fixing one item on the bug list a day, are you going to fix the least important thing or the most important thing? And so it puts things into priority for you. Are you hurrying and just fixing the quick things so you can feel the sense of quicking, fixing something quick and then it doesn't really get done right, it doesn't get done efficiently, um, and you end up having to fix it over and over again? Or are you saying, you know what, this is most important, so I'm gonna do this today and I get myself permission to not do any more until tomorrow. Now, if you get a wild hair and you decide to do two or 15 a day, that's fine because that's your choice. This is an invitation and a suggestion to give yourself some space to do it with grace and ease, to know that everything on the list gets to get done, or you come to the conclusion that you don't have to actually do it. Uh, sometimes we think things are super, super important and then we realize they're not that important. Have you ever had like something you bought and you're like, I need this now. And then it sits in the box for a long time and you never even use it or clothing that you never even end up wearing. And so we tend to do this when we're caught in the motion and we're caught in the experience of needing, needing, needing scarcity, frustration, then we'll think something super, super important. But in the long term, it's not as important. And one of our other kids talks about priorities and aligning all that. So hopefully you've already experienced that and you have clearer focus on what's important. But make a note to create a bug list for those things that are creating all this mind chatter. Even if it's the thing that's bugging you is this problem is not solved and I need to sit down and solve this problem. That's fine. It can be mental. It can be emotional. It can be social. It can be relationships. It can be any category you'd like. The idea is to give those things that you're ruminating over and over and over in your mind somewhere to go because the more you chew on it, the more bristly and tough it gets and the harder it is to see outside of the box because you've focused on it for so long that it stays very stuck in the box, okay? Uh, the other thing we do after we finish our bug list is we get to create an adventure list. Now, I used to call these bucket lists, but I don't like the idea of waiting until you die to do them, so I call them an adventure list. So we've got the negative side of everything we don't like. We get to create something that we do like. So this is a list of what you're creating. What are you calling in? What is it that's bringing desire to you? What is it that's bringing that joy? What is it that is going to make life worth living? What's your adventure? What's your journey? Um, and it could be a fun adventure. It could be a love adventure. It can be a business adventure. It can be a self-expression adventure. It can be a self-discovery adventure. Like I want to figure out this thing about myself. I need to find this skill. I, I would like to try and see if I can fail on my face and really do this thing or really succeed at it. So making your list is going to help because it clears out some of that mind noise. Um, and if you don't get the mind noise out, then it's really hard for the meditation to come to actually feel that comfort, although it's still possible. But that's why I give this to you now so you can create the list so that when we do the meditation, you're already clear. Got it? Good. Okay, so when it comes to feeling comfort, the other thing I wanna emphasize is some people think that you, if you're feeling comfort, you're weak. You're meek and mellow and you're just ee, frail. That's not what it is. It's actually strength and comfort. It's in that knowing. If you think of like true confidence, true confidence is knowing who you are and knowing that if there's any flaws or imperfections, they don't matter in the grand scheme of who you are inside. Life is not just about what you do or what you've done. It's about what you want and who you are. Sometimes there's things that we want that we haven't even created yet, but it's still part of who we are because we still want those things. And if we weren't who we were, then we're not gonna want those things, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, it's also important to allowing yourself to say yes and still move forward towards what you want. When it comes to comfort, a lot of people think, oh, that means it's stopping. It means giving up. It means, okay, your day is done, curl up in a blanket and don't do anything. 
That's not the kind of comfort we're talking about. We're talking about activated comfort. We're talking about strength in comfort. We're talking about understanding the knowing that comes from knowing you're on the path, knowing it's coming, knowing that everything is in place and in alignment, even if it feels like it's like blah, going insane, it's you are still centered and you still have comfort in knowing, oh, this is the process. Oh, everything feels like it's going crazy. Great. We are detoxing my entire world and this is a good thing. And so we get to move forward through that. It's not about giving up. It's about being empowered, being able to stand in our strength. And the more comfort you feel, the farther you can go because you're not going to have the burnout. You're not going to have the lack of longevity. You'll actually have more because you have that foundation and that strength and you actually enjoy life. Hey, there's a thought rather than racing to the end to actually enjoy it, feel good about it, to feel full with it. And you can still move forward. Now you may not move forward with the super fast pace that you would if when you're stressed out and anxious. Sometimes we get attached to feeling anxious and stressed because we can go from zero to 60 so fast. We can accomplish things twice as fast as anybody else. We can move mountains and then we get a huge adrenaline dump and it feels really, really good. Except for when it doesn't, except for when all we're left with is drained adrenal glands and all of our hormones that help us move through things are depleted. And so all we have left to do is crash and we call crashing comfort sometimes, but it's not, it's crashing. So asking yourself when you're diving into that comfort, am I feeling true comfort or am I feeling complete crashing? Am I trying to hide? Am I withdrawing? And am I escaping and diving into something outside of what I actually wanted? So looking at some of those pieces, I would love for you to assess for a moment, where have I been allowing my energy to crash? Where have I been allowing myself to misplace comfort and misunderstand comfort? And instead of real comfort with grace and ease, I've allowed myself to fall into the trap of burning myself out and then calling it comfort when I crash. So tune in for just a moment and assess that. So now is a really good time to grab your kit because we're gonna be pulling things from it. So the first thing I would love for you to grab is your candle. Go ahead and light your candle. And as you watch the flame dance, now some of you will notice like when you light it, make sure you don't ever leave this candle unattended, especially because it has pine with it. So you're gonna be burning the pine cones as well as the pine needles as it melts. Um, and if you do get really brave and you want to pull some aquamarine out when it's all melted, you are welcome to do that. So this candle is designed for energetic properties as well as physical ones. And I'm going to touch bases on a little bit on the pine and um, what it does for us. So go ahead and light your candle. And when you light it, watch the fire burn. Watch it dance, watch the flame go, watch how it interacts with you. Because a lot of times there's messages that we can receive when we let our mind be quiet enough to hear it. So as you look at your candle, think of what needs to burn, what needs to go. Are there some things that you've been stressed about or things that you've been holding space to be stressed about uh, that you need to leave? Where have I been holding space saying that I need to wait till the last minute because I'm always best when I'm stressed out, like with work projects or home projects? And if I allow myself to put this off and put this off and put this off, is it going to give me that rush that I get at the end? Because I love going from zero to 60 rather than, you know, boring 15 miles an hour all the time. So where am I allowing myself to burn and then crash and burn and then crash and calling it success and comfort, but it's really burning and crashing. Where in my life is that showing up? Where in my life do I feel like I'm blocking myself from comfort? Even take a moment and ask yourself, where am I not allowing myself to feel comfort? Or why don't I feel like I get to feel comfort? Sometimes it's the martyrdom syndrome, you know, as, as women, and especially if you are a single mom, <laughs> we can get in the thing of woe is me. You know, I have to do everything myself and I don't get to feel comfort because I have to work three jobs and take care of these kids. And I also have to feed them and emotionally support them and all of these things and still try and find time for me. That's why I don't get comfort. 
or I don't get comfort because my body is really hard on me right now and it's really hard to stay in my body. Maybe it doesn't feel the way I want it to feel or look the way I want it to look or move the way I want it to move. Maybe I have some pain going on in it and I have that comfort that is just always just outside of my reach and I hate feeling that way. So I'll just wallow in my sorrows and not ever feel comfort because I've made up my mind that I don't get to. So allow yourself to dive in and this is where we get to get ugly for a minute. If you need to pause this and grab a notebook and a pen and journal for a minute, I definitely recommend that. Allowing the light to shine out and show you what it is that needs to be burned away, okay? So a good journal entry is, I choose to burn away blank. What do I get to burn away today? What needs to be burned away? I know these are so complicated, but diving in and just asking yourself the question, so, and I love that the pine is burning and that is intentional. So, oh, look, it's like sparkling. Ooh, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna actually put my candle over here. Let's see, I'll move my pillow so you can see it. So now that I have my candle burning, I can take a moment and we can ask for some support and some guidance. We can ask for that enlightenment that comes from within. Help me to see the flame from within myself. Uh, this definitely is a candle of um, manifesting money and finances as well. So when it comes to comfort, pine is one of the ones that helps with that, especially pine is known to help with the abundance and being provided for. So I'm just going to highlight a little bit on the pine uh, and then we'll go into the next portion. Grab your balm, get comfy, and go ahead and rub some of this balm on your feet. And it's called an anointing balm because it's a little bit more... Um, well, oily, it has more oil tendency. It feels a little bit more greasy than the normal balm you would have. And the reason for that is number one, because uh, we need to let it soak in. And two, because you need to stop long enough to heal and allow yourself to feel that comfort. Once you stop and you can pull that comfort in, it's so much easier to tune into it when you're on the go, but you do need to take some time first. So now is a good time to light your candle, put your feet up, goop them up, and say, I'm sorry, I cannot help with anything else or do anything for anybody because I just anointed my feet and I need to wait for it to soak in. <laughs> and I'm serious. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Okay, so with that balm on, taking a deep breath, allowing yourself to tune in to one of the big emotions that stop us from feeling comfort is guilt. That's also one of the emotions that pine helps to support. Um, that guilt that comes in, the over-apologizing tendency. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do you know, years ago, my sister and I, we were talking and I, we decided we needed a, an I'm sorry jar. Screw swear jar and I'm sorry jar. Every time you apologize for something that really is stupid or not your fault, you get to put money into the I'm sorry jar. Uh, I think some of you will be amazed at how fast that fills up. Ooh, sorry, I didn't mean, and sometimes I'll even catch myself. Oh, I'm sorry for saying this, but, and I'm like, wait a minute, no, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. I'm supposed to say it. That's why I'm saying it. Duh, money in the jar. <laughs> so I suggest, and I'm sorry, jar, if you notice this keeps coming up or putting more of the balm on or putting your pine cone around your house where you can smell it. So they're pretty strong smelling, I love them. Uh, and so with this, uh, you're gonna take a moment and tuning into the energies of what needs to be released. And then we're gonna do our meditation. So taking a nice deep breath, you're gonna breathe in your pine cone. And we're going to imagine the things that are blocking us, the things that aren't working for us. Now there's a few ways to do this. If you're at a place where you really don't have things that you feel guilty about, you feel really good, you can just sit there and breathe. And if something does come up, speak it into the pine cone. Um, if you feel like you have deeper stuff and you just, it's overwhelming and you won't ever stop, you can actually pull just one little piece of your pine cone off, like the tiniest little break. And like, I don't really want to break mine, but I will for you, for you, I will. Okay. So let's say I feel guilty. Oh, here's one. Uh, my daughter missed her bus and I wasn't able to pick her up for like another hour after she was there. So she had to go to the library and wait. Okay. So mom guilt comes in and I feel guilty and I'm speaking this in as I'm pulling it. So there's one. Okay. There's the guilt. And so then you can set it aside. Um, I 
also kind of recommend using your singing bowl because you can use it to hold things. So you can put it in, you can chime your singing bowl. There's one. And then you go to the next one. I feel guilty. Um, see, mine are all mom guilt. And I'm, and I think we all have things we feel guilty about, but mine are mom guilt. So I feel guilty. I feel guilty I didn't walk my dog this morning and she really wanted to go, but it was cold and dark and I didn't want to go. And so I didn't make the time. So I feel guilty she had to go all day and not get to be walked. So basically you're deconstructing your guilt, what's going on, what the mind chatter is, because me on my way home, I'm probably going to be thinking, oh no, I need to go walk her, I need to go walk her, I need to go walk her. Now it's like, oh, I feel guilty about that. So I'm going to put it here and then I'm dumping it. Once you get all done with them, or if you just speak them into it and you don't break it apart, then you're going to allow it to be present as long as you feel like it needs to. But when you're all done, you're going to bury it. So you'll bury this in the earth, or you can take your little tiny pieces of pine and you're going to toss them to the earth, giving them back to the earth saying, okay, here is my crap and you get to take it back. Because pine is all about extraction. It's about pulling the toxins. It's about pulling the things that don't get to exist. And so by doing this, you're going to release it. So you can do this before your meditation. You can do this after the meditation. You can do this by itself. But allowing yourself space to say, this is my guilt. This is my pain. This gets to no longer serve me and it gets to no longer be here. So walk through that. Now, if you're still feeling kind of disoriented, it's okay. Once you go through the meditation, you might have your brain just gushing with things that you need to clear. Um, if you feel like you don't have anything to clear, um, oh, you can also burn it. I feel like somebody wants to burn there, so you can. You can burn the pine cone. Just do it safely. Do it outside because um, they do burn easy. <laughs> um, so be safe and don't leave it unintended. Um, you can also burn it after you speak things into it. So, And it's not that you're destroying the pine cone because the pine cone was already on its way to earth back to the earth. It was already in process. You're just joining forces, giving it some love and sending it on its way. So you're going to speak all of these guilts, all of these heavies, all of the noise that's going on, all of the things that are on your bug list you feel bad about. <laughs> Put that in there um, and speak it into the pine cone because the pine is the tree that holds space for when we do need to talk and connect. Um, if you think about it, it's like going and talking to your grandma or grandpa and saying, you have so much wisdom. I need more wisdom. Can I please just unload my heart to you? Can I please just confess those things that are blocked? Um, and there is an energy to it. So allowing yourself to have that energy. And again, it's something that's good to do on either a Thursday or a Sunday in between the new and the full moon. Okay. So once you have that done, we're going to go into the meditation. So the meditation portion, you're going to want to get comfy. And you're going to want to get settled in, make sure you have a big drink of water so you can pause this and go get your water if you need to. And um, you can queue up the next video that is the meditation portion, the part two.